how did you sense the tone of the Brock Purdy criticism? Do you feel like people were like gleeful that he finally lost a game? No. And didn't play well. No. I don't I don't think that people were happy that uh Brock performed poorly or that he had a bad game. Um I think that people were happy that it it kind of balanced the narrative. Um, there seems to be a visceral push to crown Brock um, what he uh, as um, like a top 10 quarterback when I mean, if you truly believe that's what he is, then you should have the courage to wait for it to ma materialize in front of us. And it really is a disservice to Brock when people um, make him a target when they push things on him that he quite frankly hasn't even shown yet. And he's just showing early signs of. So when you say when Brock has a good game, like a phenomenal game, like the Cowboys game, he was really good or mm -hmm. week one, he was very good um, <clears throat> when he has those games. And then you're asked, Oh, well, did Brock have a phenomenal day? And you say, nah, man, this is a good day, man. You stack this game and let's just see what we could do. That sounds like you're hating. It sounds like you're not giving him any credit after he has a bad game. But after he has a game like this and somebody asks, well, what do you think of Brock? And you come off with, well, hey, man, it's one game. You know what I'm saying? It is what it is. It happened within four quarters, but it's just stacking days. Let's see what we can do with next week. It doesn't sound like hating then. It doesn't sound like you're coming off against the kid. So what I'm more uh, – galvanized around is having more of a balanced approach in Brock's maturation process because I feel like we'll weed out a lot of uh, dishonest brokers, right? If, if you want Brock to be a franchise quarterback and you want him here for the future, then you're willing to see him go through his lumps, right? Because yeah. you want your guy to be tested. But if you can't, and you know, stay, the test is coming. Sorry. And you thank you. And you, yeah, there you go. You know that this is the NFL. Those tests are coming. But if you can't stomach him struggling, if you can't stomach just hearing criticism about what's simply being done right in front of you, then you have to check yourself and understand that it, it was never about Brock to begin with. You just want a perfect vessel to live vicariously through. So there's two sides of this. And this is why I felt I wasn't gleeful about his performance. I wasn't gleeful that the Niners lost, but I appreciated the loss because I feel like we finally learned a lot about mm -hmm. Brock Purdy in particular because mm -hmm. we know he's good and this loss doesn't change that he's a good quarterback but at the same time he hadn't really faced adversity yet he lost the NFC championship game but him and the whole team can say that he would have won if he played the whole time like he he played the whole game in this game and he lost to the Browns mm -hmm. and in the process I mean, we're not going to overreact to it because it's one loss and he's had a lot, a lot of wins, but it's like we finally learn his strengths and weaknesses. Like it's a coverage thing. If you play zone coverage against Brock and sort of dare, like sort of expect him to not execute, you're playing yourself. You're he dumb. executes. He executes like the best vets in the league and he'll take what you give you, what you give him. He won't force it down the field. It's the wrong approach. And then this week, the Vikings, what they do is they blitz a lot. If you try to do that to Brock Purdy, he's going to beat you. He's, he's going to find it. He's going to. But if you can do what the Browns did, and not a lot of teams can, all of a sudden, Brock's, I don't know what you want to call it, limitations or weaknesses. Well, no, or I, don't, I don't even, I don't even come to the it. forefront. Yeah. Like, I don't, I don't even see it as like weaknesses. I, I, I see it as we don't know what we have yet. Right. These, this, we haven't had a full season with Brock. So being able to see. He's a human. He just looked human yeah. against the Browns, it's, as opposed to the other times where he looked like he was <laughs> Harry Potter. Exactly. Yeah. So Peter Pan. Yeah. Like my 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 narrative around Brock is that I, I'm not looking for anything that he's weak at. We already know what we got coming out the gate. If somebody says that, oh man, Brock can't throw this throw. Well, yeah, we already knew that his arm, his arm strength is going to be. Um, something that's going to be left to be desired. Now, how he matriculates around that is what makes him great, right? We knew that Tom Brady couldn't run. We knew he wasn't athletic, 
But what made him great is what he turned into it, right? Tom Brady's athleticism superseded him being able to run up and down the field. But really, his athleticism was used on pocket awareness, being almost unsackable, being able to know how to get rid of the ball and to climb up in the pocket and to keep the sticks alive. Those are the things that somebody with Brock's skill set is going to have to be able to hone as he moves forward. So it's not about looking at what he can't do. We already know some of the things that he can't do. We're just trying to see how are you going to fashion what you can do in this arena. And that's what we were looking for, right? And that's what he's growing into. He needs reps. Even Brock needs reps. He has not played enough football for him to be able to know what to do in every situation. So, yeah, he got caught with his pants down because we had a team where Jim Swartz has this offense's number. Facts. Mm -hmm. It's by the numbers. And with losing two weapons in the inclement weather game on the road against a number one defense, he already had the he already had the the card stacked against him before he even took the first snap. Right. right. So uh what we want to be able to understand is that you know there's two sides of of following Brock, and there is the sensationalized mob who is either galvanized to on his unquestioned success or his impenetrable doom, his impending doom, or there's people who understand football and its construct and see, hey man, these are there's tests that are going to be coming down the road anyway for this kid. There's no reason to argue about it incessantly every day. So I see both sides. There's some there's the side that they want to muck rake and grab their pitchforks and you know make this a huge uh ballyhoo <laughs> if yeah. you will but there is a balanced side to this that is going to be able to that understands that whether we like it or not the truth is going to bear out anyway I don't think anyone takes pleasure in watching Brock Purdy struggle I think everyone is rooting no. for Brock Purdy and understands that like this is a guy who uh deserves to get a big payday and we're all rooting for him to keep playing well I just feel like what we learned was when you come given what happened against the Browns Take the Browns out of it. When you combine Purdy's processing, elite processing and elite preparation with mm -hmm. Kyle Shanahan's scheme and pre-snap motion and the five eligible receivers that Purdy has to work with mm -hmm. and defenses mostly playing zone, like it, it makes sense that Brock Purdy is putting up crazy numbers. Right. The combination of – and he's part of it. I'm not minute. He is absolutely part of his processing and preparation is on another level. He's like a 35-year-old football savant. Um, but he also has a lot of benefits. And when he goes against a defense like Cleveland that can kind of match those eligible receivers and Kyle's scheme, like, yeah, Jim Schwartz is, is every bit the match for Kyle Shanahan. And, like, the, the players on in Cleveland, every bit the match for the players on, in San Francisco finally had a team that could match up and challenge them man-to-man. -man. Yeah. And Brock didn't look like the MVP of the league. And I'm not saying that that's the real Brock Purdy, but that's the other – that's his shadow, the shadow Brock. Yeah, I agree with that. I mean, I do I do know that um, nobody gets away with the league. There's going to be a book on you. Whether or not people know how to read it correctly or not is up to them, right? Right. Well, what does that mean? Everybody's not going to be able to replicate what the Browns did to us last week. They're just not, right? Including um, the Vikings this week. Including the Vikings, right. And there's going to be teams, including the Vikings, who don't even do what right. the Browns do on defense in order to make that a big game. Um, right. Or a hard game for us offensively. So this is just honestly like a blip on the map compared to everything that Brock has done, right? Yep. It's just that it was just jarring to see it just kind of like overnight. You know, you thought you would see kind of like tendencies that slip or ways that we could possibly lose games. But you didn't expect it. You didn't expect to just see the rock bottom floor in one game, right? No. So like even... But we did. But we did, exactly. We did. So, that's the thing that is a little alarming to me is that it's not necessarily that um, Brock had a bad game, but it was the fact that it would happen so quick and just literally overnight as far as the game before he had a way better game. So yeah. for me, um, this is just more time on task and proof of concept to see where Brock is going to be. That's all right. We got rid of tons of assets to be able to keep him for him to be the franchise guy. So, I mean, if he's a rental, then what are we talking see, that's about? What, see, that's what I want to go to before we move on. To me, like, you watch a game like that, and you realize, like, okay, you finally, 
meet your match in terms of supporting cast, your, your team against theirs, and like you look like that, it makes me feel like you can't just put Brock Purdy on any team and he's going to ball out. You know, if you put mm-hmm. him on the Saints, I don't know how good he would look. And then you can't just give him like any contract. I, I'm looking at that. I'm thinking, is this guy worth $40 million a year? Like if he, if you start taking away the supporting cast because he's a franchise quarterback making franchise quarterback money, like what's that going to look like? But that's all issues for down the line. Right. I just feel like, like, like the Eagles are there right now, right? Jalen Hurts had this incredible season last year. They gave, they made him the highest paid player in the league. And now look at him. They're stuck with him. They're stuck with him. And he's not that great. And I think people could have seen it coming. Like, man, he wasn't making any money. He was new. He was on the best team. Like, wait yeah. for it. Wait till the book is out on him and he's actually making real money. Like, that's kind of the things that are going through my mind when I watch Purdy. This, what's happening to Hurts right now in his fourth year in the league. Yeah, Philly, they were definitely prisoners of the moment. You know, they yeah. really wanted to right some wrongs. They themselves got rid of a high pick that that scratched everybody's head in Carson Wentz. Carson Wentz. And, yeah, and I feel as though that there was a little bit of uh, – uh, there was a little bit of impatience from the front office over there of saying that, dude, we not only is Jalen enough, but we got to be able to kind of like get rid of the stench of what we did with Carson Wentz. Like we got to be able to wrap our arms around this guy. We can't be seen being wishy-washy about this kid, especially if he shows us that we're ready to win with the window that we have. Right. And that's kind of what the Eagles did. That team was ready before Jalen Hurts got there. So as soon as Jalen Hurts came in and kind of solidified, added with a couple of pieces, it just seemed as though, Hey, Let's kind of just make him our guy. Like, yeah. ready? <clears throat> Let's just do it. But now that they didn't handle business against um, Kansas City with the Super Bowl, they're really stuck with Jalen Hurts now, right? And then now you're kind of stuck with making sure that you keep an offense that not only is good enough and viable against the league, but you got to keep an offense that's good enough for Jalen Hurts to be like a weapon, right? You can't just go get bargain guys anymore. You got to go get a Julio Jones. You got to get A.J. Brown. You got to get somebody that can actually literally go up and get the ball. So Jalen Hurts is surrounded and he's loaded with athletes. But you mean to tell me that if they didn't have a veteran over there, they wouldn't be a lot. They wouldn't be feeling a lot better about their situation. So So, um, the same thing, the same thing applies here where uh, I'm not too sure that this that our coaching staff is really wrapped around Brock being the guy. Right. And we'll see. We'll see. Because yeah. last week was um, the first developmental game where Brock had showed his age. He showed he showed his he showed his experience. Mm-hmm. Um, how much more can this? I mean, we're going to talk about it, but do they have the stomach to, to, to see this kid through? Yeah. We're going to get there. OK. Elite Archer 23 says, yes, people are praying for Brock's demise with you being at the top of the list. People are so sensitive. I'm not praying for Brock's demise. Why? That's why would I? I mean, like, what did he do to me? First of all, mm-hmm. second of all, like, the man is like at the bottom of the food chain in terms of like financial pecking order in, on his own team. I think everyone feels like he's deserved his contract extension, or re- he should have had his contract renegotiated a long time ago. But there's like a stupid rule in the, in the CBA that needs to be changed. I'm on Brock's side. I'm just not crowning him an elite quarterback like. Philly did with Jalen Hurts too soon. And now look at him now. I'm just trying to remain professionally every distanced. Every quarterback that's won a Super Bowl wasn't the guy, right? Yeah. So Brock doesn't have to be the guy for us to win the Super Bowl. However, if we're going to keep him on our team as a franchise quarterback, then he deserves the grace to grow. He does. Nobody's preying on Brock's demise, but nope. he ain't going to be given anything either. Many PSF 95 says beat writers always ask the team questions that lead to specific answers after a loss. Shanahan isn't going to say, wait, you're right. We would have won if we used McCaffrey less, even if it's true. True. But you still got to ask him the question and see what he says and how he says it and mm-hmm. his demeanor. Sonny says, Grant, thoughts on Jack Hammer. Gave my thoughts on Jack Hammer on Twitter. I don't want to get into it. Uh, that's his life, and I don't want to talk about it. Sorry, Sonny. Um, Rome gut levels is good or bad. It's always more about Kyle than Brock. Mm. You know the answer to that, Rome.